So Google just dropped their latest AI model, Gemini 2.5 Pro, and it's absolutely dominating benchmarks. Meanwhile, OpenAI has broken the internet once again, this time with native image generation in GPT-40. And lastly, Arc AGI 2 is here. After OpenAI's O3 Mini scored 85% on the original Arc AGI test, they've released a second version designed to be much tougher. Let's get into it. So, the release of Gemini 2.5 Pro this week has been kind of overshadowed by OpenAI's new image generation. But this model is actually really impressive. It's topping the leaderboards on multiple benchmarks, specifically the reasoning and coding ones. As you can see, it scores 18.8% on Humanity's last exam, 84% on the GPQA, which are PhD level science questions, and 86.7% on the AMI, which are high level math questions. Now, we have its scores on other benchmarks as well. I won't go through all of them, but essentially, it's either on par with the state of the art or better in the majority of categories. I mean, 81.7% on the MMMU, a visual reasoning benchmark, 63% on SWE Bench, and here's an interesting one, 83.1% on the MRCR benchmark. This is a benchmark testing how well models can handle long context retrieval tasks. That is, finding relevant information buried deep within massive documents. Notice how Gemini 2.5 Pro is the only model with a score for 1 million context window. That's because literally no other model offers this large of a context window size. So that is a major advantage with this model. It also debuted as number one on the LM arena, which is a chatbot arena that pits models against each other. And it's still sitting on top with a significant lead over Grok 3 and GPT 4.5. So overall, this model isn't a drastic improvement over what we already have, but it is definitely the best option available for most use cases right now, especially the ones that require heavy reasoning. And based on the LM Arena leaderboards we just looked at, people seem to prefer it over any other model, at least for now. The other thing I've been hearing a lot about with this model is its incredible coding capabilities. Google claims it excels at building visually compelling web apps, agentic code applications, and even code transformation and editing. Now, I haven't been able to test all of that myself, but if you use these models for coding, I'd love to hear your experience. Let me know in the comments. Now, I already made an entire video covering the new OpenAI image gen release, but for those who haven't seen it, I'll give you guys a quick breakdown. So GPT-40 now has native image generation capabilities, which means when you ask it to generate an image, it isn't sending off your request to a separate image generation model like Dolly, it's actually creating the image itself. This allows the model to better leverage the context of your conversation, and also just to better understand what you're actually asking for. The model is also way more accurate, way more detailed, and honestly just generates exceptional images. As you can see from the demo playing in the background, the model is able to follow detailed instructions very well, and generate pretty much exactly what this guy asked for. In another demo, we can also see how incredible its text rendering skills are. The model's ability to place text accurately within an image is next level, and allows you to create graphics like these that can be used for educational purposes, or potentially even marketing and advertising. Now, for some reason, GPT-40's native image generation went viral for its ability to create these stunning Ghibli-style anime images. And yeah, they are cool, I mean, I'd be lying if I said I didn't turn a picture of myself into a Ghibli character, but I think people are kind of missing the point. What really makes this model special is that its image generation is native. Meaning, again, the language model itself, GPT-40, is actually generating the image, not just passing the prompt off to a separate system. A well-known figure in the space, Ethan Mullock, actually pointed this out. He stated, Very confident that no one has clearly gotten their head wrapped around the last couple of days in AI. True multimodal image generation, far bigger implications than anime profiles. And then, of course, he also mentions Gemini 2.5, showing models can still become much better, and new GPT-4 voice, which I covered in my last video. But he elaborates further on this in another post, where he states, Multimodal image generation is going to actually impact a lot of economically and culturally meaningful work in ways I don't think we understand yet. It is very flexible, relevant to many uses, and got good all at once. Still flaws, but the gain in capabilities seem rather rapid. 
So what do you guys think? Is this the beginning of the end for graphic designers, illustrators, and even potentially ad agencies? I mean, it seems like a lot of this work can be handled entirely by the model itself now. There's still flaws, as Moloch pointed out, but the pace it's improving at is outstanding. Now, we also had another image generation model drop this week, but it got completely drowned out by OpenAI's announcement. This one's from a brand new company called Rev, and they just released Rev Image 1.0. Their model is honestly pretty impressive. It seems to be on par with the current state-of-the-art image generators like Flux, Recraft, and ImageGen, and for a brand new company to come out swinging like this, definitely very impressive. If OpenAI hadn't dropped native image generation this week, this would have 100% gotten a lot more attention. That being said, this isn't native image generation, so it's not going to match what GPT-40 can do, but still, it shows just how fast the image generation space is evolving. In other AI news, Apple is finally stepping up its AI game. They reportedly just placed an order for $1 billion worth of NVIDIA GPUs. Now, this comes just a few days after they fired their AI head and replaced him with Mike Rockwell, who was apparently the brains behind the Apple Vision Pro. So yeah, Apple, a company that's been seriously lagging behind in the AI race, is finally making some moves. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on them, because a $1 billion GPU order is a major signal that something big is coming. Speaking of GPUs, NVIDIA's market share might be facing a serious challenge. According to a new Bloomberg report, Jock Ma-backed Ant Group has started using Chinese-made semiconductors to train AI models, and the results are impressive. As the article states, Jack Ma-backed Ant Group used Chinese-made semiconductors to develop techniques for training AI models that would cut costs by 20%, according to people familiar with the matter. These chips apparently deliver similar results to NVIDIA's H800s, and while Ant is still using NVIDIA for AI development, it is starting to rely more on local Chinese chips for its latest models. Now, while NVIDIA obviously still has the best performing chips on the market, this is definitely a bit concerning. Because if China can build competitive chips that sidestep US export controls and cut costs at the same time, then the playing field shifts. China will no longer have to rely on the US for its AI hardware and can scale up its AI efforts independently. Great for China, but not so great for the US, which is banking on its lead to maintain dominance in the global AI race. As we know, this lead is already dwindling, and China is starting to catch up on all fronts in AI. Just recently, we saw the DeepSeq v3 update, which I covered in my previous video. This update was actually pretty massive. According to Artificial Analysis, it's the first time ever that an open weights model ranks as the best non-reasoning model. That is a huge milestone for open source AI. And it's clear that not only is the gap between closed and open source AI shrinking, but so is the gap between China and the US in this global AI race. Now, we have to talk about the new ArcAGI challenge. So, for those who don't know, the ArcAGI challenge is designed to test whether a model is capable of human-like reasoning and general intelligence. It's based on abstraction and reasoning tasks. These are problems that don't rely on memorization or training data, but instead require models to identify patterns, infer rules, and solve puzzles in ways similar to how humans would. So, just like the original ArcAGI challenge, the human baseline is 85%, and any model that scores above that will also following the rules, will receive the grand prize of $700,000. And more importantly, it'll be a major milestone towards achieving actual AGI. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, OpenAI's O3 Mini model with high compute managed to score 88% on the first Arc AGI challenge. Obviously, O3 Mini is not AGI, and so they decided to create a new one. This is where Arc AGI 2 comes in an unsaturated frontier AGI benchmark that challenges AI reasoning systems. Same relative ease for humans. So even though this test is much harder, as you can see, base LLM scores 0%, and current state-of-the-art reasoning models don't even crack 4%, humans are still able to do it with relative ease. There is also now a compute limit, where each task should cost no more than 42 cents. Here are the current leaderboards. Right now, O3 is leading the pack with a score of just under 5%. Keep in mind, there are humans who have scored 100% on this test. So it's clear, something fundamental is still missing in today's models, and that's exactly the point of this challenge. We'll definitely be watching closely, because if there's one thing we've learned, it's that these benchmarks can go from seemingly impossible to completely saturated almost overnight. 
Now, there were a couple more stories we have to cover, but before that, I wanted to play you guys this clip of Perplexity CEO Aravind Srinivas speaking about the coming job displacement we're going to face due to AI. This is something that most CEOs of AI companies won't talk about, or if they do, they will often spin it and talk about all the jobs AI will create. But in this clip, it feels like for the first time, we're actually getting it straight. Take a look. The dystopian part of it is, um... Unfortunately, in the short term, there's going to be a lot of labor displacement. Uh, not as many people are needed to get a work done anymore. Uh, so how people upskill themselves and adapt, uh, those who, who are using AIs are definitely going to be well positioned. Um, so all that stuff is going to take place and how people react to it. That's already like, you know, not you don't need um, to build 10,000 people companies to be a trillion dollar company anymore. So definitely bear, bear the next generation of graduates getting jobs existing big techs are laying off people or like not hiring more so all this stuff is definitely going to impact like the market and uh, it's very interesting that simultaneously while creating new value and making software creation easier and uh, we're also like displacing existing labor and value so how people deal with all this is going to be interesting to watch and, and uh, I don't think anyone really knows how it'll all play out. So yeah, I think we have some really rough times ahead in the short term. A lot of people are unprepared for what's coming and you can't really blame them. It's hard to prepare for something that is literally going to disrupt every major industry. I mean, there's even AI powered humanoid robots that we have to worry about, which by the way, is a space that has been moving at lightning speed lately. Just recently, Figure Robotics announced their latest breakthrough, Learned Natural Walking. In just a few hours, the robots were able to learn years of walking through simulation. And as you can see, their movement is now much more natural and human-like than it used to be. Now, this is just one of the many breakthroughs Figure has announced this year. And if you've been watching my channel, you know just how bullish I am on humanoid robotics. I genuinely believe we're only a few years away from seeing these robots inside people's homes and performing real, useful tasks out in the real world. This, combined with AI disrupting knowledge work, will be a huge problem we have to deal with in the coming years. Finally, to close out the video, I wanted to briefly talk about this new paper titled Agent Archive. So this paper essentially presents a framework where autonomous research agents can upload, retrieve, and build on each other's research. As they state here, progress in scientific discovery is rarely the result of a single eureka moment, but is rather the product of hundreds of scientists incrementally working together toward a common goal. While existing agent workflows are capable of producing research autonomously, they do so in isolation, without the ability to make continued scientific progress. To address this, they introduced Agent Archive, which again, essentially allows these agents to collaborate and build on each other's research just like humans do. So I'm not going to go deep into the paper, I kind of just wanted to show you guys what's happening here. Because the idea of AI agents from around the world doing collaborative scientific research is just wild. I mean, this goes right back to the labor displacement conversation we've been having. We're not just talking about AI replacing repetitive or low skill jobs anymore. This is high level cognitive work. And honestly, while that might sound scary at first, it's not necessarily a bad thing. If we can significantly accelerate scientific discovery, and as long as those discoveries are used responsibly and shared for the benefit of everyone, this could be huge for humanity. We're talking about solving unknown problems, developing revolutionary cures, increasing our understanding of the universe, basically all the things you've heard before about AI's future potential. If we get this right, it won't just change the world, it could help us understand it in ways we never thought possible. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.